The Hufnagel prostheses were used for several years and were remarkable for their noise because you had a ball valve rattling in a cage of plastic and they did not apply to valvular disease that was valvular stenosis, the inability of the valve to open. By the mid-1960s, it was possible to operate inside the heart. This was done with the aid of a heart-lung machine, which took the venous return to the heart and oxygenated it and pumped it back in to the aorta or to one of the large vessels in the leg. Once it became possible to open the heart, for valve replacement. The first prostheses that were tried were, like the Huffnagel prosthesis, ball and cage valves. Our collection shows many of the first attempts at ball and cage prostheses. Albert Starr's valves were among the first to be used, and they depended upon a silastic rubber ball in a metal cage. The cage had a sewing ring which allowed you to suture the valve into the place where the valve was present, generally the aortic or the mitral valve. Problems arose with those valves in several areas. First, the designs of the valves themselves had to be such that the, in the open position, the valve had little resistance to flow of blood. Second, when it was in the closed position, we didn't want to have any leakage to a significant degree. 